proceeding. Welcome to Talk Law Radio with attorney Todd Marquardt of the Marquardt Law Firm at MarquardtLawFirm.com. Welcome back to Talk Law Radio. I'm Todd Marquardt here on 9.30 a.m. The Answer and podcasts everywhere. You can also find these episodes on TalkLawRadio.com and Facebook Live. We've been talking with Tony Abbott, who is a part owner of Alpha Graphics. It's a professional quality printing. And we're going to talk about the other members of his family that are involved in the business. So, Tony, uh, you started this business and now it's really a full fledged family business. How did that come about? So, yes, when we purchased the business in 2009, um, it was called Presto Printing at that time. It was an independent printing business. Uh, The lady who owned it at that time, she had started it from scratch and uh, built it into a very strong business with a million dollars a year plus in sales. And, uh, And she was just ready to retire, so, you know, getting older. So we purchased it from her. And we just didn't have that same business knowledge and savvy that that she had. And so the business actually declined for about the first six years uh, that we owned it. And uh, every year it was going down and I was getting more and more concerned. And and uh, at, at that time, like I said, my son Taylor was out playing hockey. Uh, then when he finally decided that his hockey career was over, he was looking for something to do. And so I offered him, you know, basically a, to write his own ticket to come mm-hmm. and work with me in the mm-hmm. business. Um, at that time, he was a pretty shy guy. Most hockey players are pretty shy and pretty introverted because they just focus on one thing, getting that puck in the net. Mm-hmm. And uh, anyhow, so he was pretty shy, but he came in and he started very quietly, you know, researching everything and looking at everything. And he came to me one day and he said, Dad, he said, you know, he said, everywhere I eat, everywhere I shop, everything I do is a franchise. He said, us young people like franchises. He said, I find that all the businesses that are flourishing nowadays are a franchise. He said, I think we should join a franchise. And I said to him, that's all on you because I don't know what you're talking yeah, about. Okay. So he started to research. He found Alpha Graphics amongst all the other ones that were out there. And he said he felt this was the best one that we could join. So we joined up with Alpha Graphics. Um, again, there was a, a, a lot of cost and a lot of training and a lot of involvement that went with that. Uh, but we were glad to do it. And uh, that's when we took on the wide format and the making of the signs and banners. And, and we got the big flatbed where we could do um, you know, very large format printing. And, uh, once we started to do that, the business just went up exponentially. Wow. Yes. To the, to the degree where we actually, about four months ago, we purchased a second location, another Alpha Graphics, uh, franchise that was for sale over on the Starcrest, uh, near the airport. And so now we're doing between the two, we're doing much more than $2 million a year in sales. So the businesses are, are doing great. And, uh, and really it's because of my son's involvement who went from this shy hockey player to a very outgoing uh, sales guy who could, you know, pretty much sell uh, ice to an Eskimo, as they wow. say. <laughs> yes. So he was he was a very uh, a very outgoing fella because he started to take all these training courses and he started to take all of these uh, sales, you know, read these sales books and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And so he was just able to really expand the business through his just through his, uh, you know, hard work and effort. Wow, that's a, a great testimony to a successful family business. Uh, sometimes running a family business is difficult because you have a family member that doesn't put in the work. But in your case, uh, you were pleasantly surprised to see him putting more effort and helping it really take off. Yes, thankfully he takes after my wife, and he's very, very, <laughs> he's very dedicated. He gets there at six o'clock every morning. Uh, he's put in two or three hours of work before anybody else shows up, and he's usually the last one to leave at night. So, um, so yeah, he is very, very dedicated, like his mother. She's also a very hard worker. Um, after about the first year, when sales really began to decline, um, I had to let go of some staff, so I brought my wife into the business. So she's there with us as well, full time every day, and uh, she's an extremely hard worker, and so. Uh, between her and my son, and we now have 15 employees. Uh, so between that crew, we're able to uh, to get everybody uh, satisfied for the most part. Sometimes we take a little too long to get the Marquardt orders out, but we, yeah. we work hard to get them done. Well, when you're busy and you have lots of customers, uh, that that's one of the results is uh, you got you to gotta wait a little while. 
So Taylor's doing well in the business, and he's now got some ownership in the company. So when we purchased the second location, because, again, of the immigration issue, mm -hmm. um, myself being an E2 investor's visa, I was not eligible for a SBA loan, Small Business Administration loan. Um, Taylor, in the meantime, has been married to an American gal for about five years now. And so I think it was two years or three years after they were married, he applied for his permanent resident or his green card. Mm -hmm. uh, he was granted that. So he got a green card, which in the uh, government's eyes and in the banker's eyes is the same thing as an American citizenship. Okay. And so Taylor was able to qualify for a small business administration loan. And so therefore, when we purchased the new location, we put it 100% in his name. Oh, okay. Yes. And so the way we operate it, so I technically own 100% of our first location. He technically owns 100% of our second location, but we really just run them as one large business. Okay. Yeah. Wow. That's, uh, it's great to hear of a successful family enterprise. Tell us what, uh, what role does your wife serve there? So she is kind of the glue that holds everybody together. Uh, as you know, with 15 employees, you can get a lot of friction. Mm -hmm. And so um, so she's just, my wife is a uh, a typical Canadian, outgoing, friendly, uh, hugs everybody, loves everybody. And so she just keeps everybody happy and keeps everybody, uh, you know, uh, communicating and talking with each other. She keeps the jobs moving throughout our, our different various stages that they have to go through. Um, her primary role is is what we call proofing. Uh, somebody has to put those last set of eyes on everything before you print it to make sure it's all mm -hmm. spelled correctly, mm -hmm. to make sure it all looks right. And so that's kind of her primary role as the proofer. Uh, but she also helps with the wide format, making signs. Um, she also helps with, uh, you know, just pretty much any kind of packaging or whatever needs to happen. She's kind of that person that can go around and do pretty much anybody's job. So, so that's what she does. Okay, so we've got these two locations. Why don't you tell our listeners uh, specifically how to get in touch with you? Is it best to go to your website? So yes, there's actually four Alpha Graphics uh, franchises in town. They're all independently owned. Um, so the two that we own, which we would hope you would call, uh, the one is on West Avenue. So it's uh, 2714 West Avenue. Um, we Our website is Alpha Graphics US 770. Uh, for that location. And that location does basically everything. Um, we, we specialize in small formats, so the printing of business cards, letterhead envelopes, uh, NCR forms, anything small. We also do signs and banners there. Uh, but the new location that we purchased in March, which is at 12077 Starcrest, actually specializes in vehicle wraps and the more of the larger uh, printing that, that is out there, larger signs. Um, but we do a lot of vehicle wraps at that location and, and, uh, it's just a, a great location if you need some decals or if you need some signs or we do a lot of wall graphics there. We've been doing a lot of schools this summer. Um, and so, yeah, the, if you, if you'd like to spruce up your business or maybe get your, your face noticed out there on a vehicle, your business noticed on a vehicle, then we can take care of that for you. Something related to printing got me thinking about the gospel. Mm. And, and since you're a theologian, I, I thought you might have a take on this. Um, being that my background is uh, Lutheran, uh, I thought back, well, the, the printing press is really what helped uh, the Reformation uh, expand uh, across the world. And so um, you, you had talked about some of the old school printing. Um, give us your take on... Uh, printing and the Reformation. Yes, boy, that's that's a great connection. You know, it's funny because as a printer, you forget this is what actually did help spread the gospel throughout the world. Um, I want to say 1611, the first King James Bible. I might be a little bit fuzzy on that date, but um, but I remember when the Bible was first printed on the Gutenberg Press, it was literally, it changed the world because it, it, it allowed people to get out there with the gospel and to, and to make it readily available to every single person. In their own language. In their own language, yes. So yes, that, uh, uh, that Gutenberg printing press was, was actually, I'm sure it was you know, directed by God and by the Holy Spirit so that the, the gospel could be preached throughout the world. And so we're very thankful whenever we, we do printing for churches, we do a lot of that. Uh, anytime we do printing for you know, any kind of Christian uh, events. I, I'm a strong supporter of the Justice Foundation, uh, you know, uh, Cross Trail Outfitters, which is a youth outreach program. Um, I do all kinds of printing for those organizations, and you just feel like you're spreading the gospel, right. you know, when you, when you get to print that great stuff. 
Great. I'm glad that you knew something about that. Yes. <laughs> yeah, what I was reading, uh, just to catch myself up about it, um, prior to having the printing press, most of the gospel was just uh, by word of mouth, and it, it was in Latin uh, through the Catholic Church, and um, so making it available in everybody's own language really helped spread things faster. Yes, it did. Yeah. They're, they're back Way back when they first started, you know, transcribing the Bible, it was done by monks in a monastery where they would just very meticulously, you know, uh, copy the scriptures from, mm -hmm. from page to page to page. And, and, uh, and so it was something that was a very, very slow process to get the gospel out. But then once that printing press was invented and it was able to get out there, um, it was just something that revolutionized people's ability to share the gospel, and it gave people the opportunity to open their own eyes and make their own decisions about their own faith. Um, whereas prior to that, it was often just dictated to them by the church, and in this sense, the, the Catholic church, as to what they should and should not believe. Mm -hmm. But when the Bible became available to everybody, then people started to really uh, have their own personal faith and really understand uh, the gospel in a, in a much more detailed way a personal connection between them and Christ instead of through a, a priest. Correct. Yes. And that's what it's all about today. Uh, that's one of the, the best things we can do is just read the Bible, you know, uh, talk to God and make those uh, personal connections ourselves. Amen. We got to take one more break. And when we come back, we'll be talking about legacy, among other things. You don't want to miss this. Stay tuned. This has been Talk Law Radio with attorney Todd Marquardt, brought to you by the Marquardt Law Firm. You can learn more at MarquardtLawFirm.com and be sure to listen to the full Talk Law Radio show Saturday mornings at 11 on 930 AM, The Answer.